The Cuyacahannock were an indigenous group that lived in at least five towns to the east of the Wayanoc and the west of the Wereskoyak. We know three towns by name, Cuyacahannock, which was the seat of power, Nantapoyac, and Chihuopo. There were also two other towns, but their names are no longer known. These towns were situated primarily in present-day Surrey County, and their towns were likely east of the upper Chipoaks Creek and west of the lower Chipoaks Creek. Unfortunately, no Cuyacahannock settlements remain for us to visit, so come along with us as we take a walk on Cuyacahannock land and talk about who they were. The destination is on your right, Chipoak State Park. Arrived. During the turn of the 17th century, a man named Papiskama, also called Papiskanama or Papisco, was werewants of the Cuyacahannock, having been appointed by Paramount Chief Powhatan, and a man named Chopok or Choapok was werewants of Chuopo. Papisco had inherited his leadership position through familial lines, but was demoted at some point during his life. Accounts say that Papisco had fallen in love with and, quote, stolen away, end quote, a woman from a man named Opikan Canoe. Since Opikan Canoe was the brother of Paramount Chief Powhatan, Papisco was demoted and made werewants of one of the smaller towns of the Cuyacahannock. He was allowed to stay with the woman, though, and reportedly he made her his, quote, best beloved, end quote, and she would travel with him wherever he went. Although we do not know her name, she is described as being very beautiful, and her attendants would adorn her with niceties such as a fair white-dressed deerskin, a frontal of white coral, a chain of copper that looped three times around her neck, pearl earrings, and a feather mantle of blue feathers so thick that they appeared smooth and sleek like deep purple satin. After Papisco's demotion, Paramount Chief Powhatan selected a boy named Tatakoop to become the new werewants of Cuyacahannock. Tatakoop seems to be the son of a woman named Aholask, who is a werewanskwa of one of the Cuyacahannock towns. The Cuyacahannock's lives were irrevocably changed in May as news spread of explorers sailing up the river where they lived. The Rappahannock traveled over 100 miles to stay with the Cuyacahannock in order to meet these newcomers. Rappahannock and Cuyacahannock leaders sent word requesting a meeting, and Powhatan and English leaders met on May 4, 1607. The Cuyacahannocks were thus one of the first Virginia Indian groups the English encountered in 1607 after landing at Jamestown. The English colonists initially referred to the Cuyacahannock as the Tappahannocks or Topohannock, on occasion mistaking their name for the name of the capital of the Rappahannock. The Cuyacahannock were one of the most hospitable groups to the English early on until English aggression and the pressures of English colonization eventually forced them to cut ties and protect themselves. Before his demotion, Papisco met some of the English colonists while both parties were visiting the Paspahe, whose seat of power was east of Jamestown. In the following account, Englishman George Percy mistakenly identifies Papisco as werewants of the Rappahannock. The next day, being the 5th of May, the werewants of Rappahannock came down to the waterside with all his train. Coming before them, playing on a flute made of reed, with a crown of deer's hair colored red in fashion of a rose, fastened about his knot of hair, and a great plate of copper on the other side of his head with two long feathers in fashion of a pair of horns placed in the midst of his crown. His body was painted all with crimson, with a chain of beads about his neck, his face painted blue, besprinkled with silver ore as we thought. His ears all be hung with bracelets of pearl, and in each ear a bird's claw through it beset with fine copper or gold. He entertained us in so modest a proud fashion as though he had been prince of civil government, holding his countenance without laughter or any such ill behavior. He made signs to us to come to his town. He went foremost, and all the rest of his people and ourselves followed him up a steep hill where his palace was settled. We passed through the woods and fine paths, having most pleasant springs which issued from the mountains. We also went through the goodliest cornfields that ever was seen in any country. When we came to Rappahannock's town, he entertained us in good humanity. Papisco maintained good relations with the English colonists during the early years, with John Smith calling him an, quote, honest, proper, good, promise-keeping king, who did always at our greatest need supply us with victuals of all sorts, which he did notwithstanding the continual wars which he had had in the rest of his country, and upon his deathbed charged his people that they should forever keep good quiet with the English, end quote. John Smith writes about a time when he had been sent to trade for corn with nearby native communities. 
Cuyahannock women approached him in canoes while he was traveling back to James Fort and gave him around 15 bushels of corn, seemingly without asking for any physical items in return. The Cuyahannock also escorted Nathaniel Powell and Annas Todd Kill southward in 1608 or 1609 in an unsuccessful attempt to locate survivors of the Roanoke colony. An Englishman named William White also observed part of what the English considered to be a religious initiation into manhood, the Huskanaw, at a Cuyahannock town in 1608. This observation led to the belief amongst the English that Cuyahannock was the spiritual capital of the Powhatan Paramount chiefdom. Accounts of the ceremony vary, with William White and John Rolfe disagreeing about what events even took place during the Huskanaw. John Smith, George Percy, and William Strachey all seem to lift aspects of William White's account to include in their own writings as well, potentially proliferating misrepresentations of this event. The English also record another event at Cuyahannock where families of priests and werewances went to participate in a ceremony where successful participants of a physical test of endurance became a Cuyahannock, or lesser god. Papisco was one such participant who reportedly experienced visions from nature as a result. Just as many portions of the Huskanaw were kept secret from English observers, and the English expressed confusion over the parts of the event that they did witness, the details of this ceremony are also uncertain. During the years of 1610 to 1620, the Cuyahannock were pressured to distance themselves from the English colonists. The English and other groups in the Powhatan Paramount Chiefdom were in open conflict, and the English began taking these aggressions out on the Cuyahannock. Additionally, the English colonists began settling up and down the river, pushing Powhatan peoples inland and away from their waterways, which led to a decrease in their ability to travel, trade, fish, and hunt. During 1622, in response to English colonization and assaults, Obikan Canoe, who was a new leader of the Powhatan peoples after the death of his brother, Paramount Chief Powhatan, organized a large-scale military attack against the English, especially on English settlements on the upper portions of the James River. It is unclear whether or not the Cuyahannock participated in this attack, but it is clear that no English settlements in Cuyahannock territory seem to have been attacked, even though English settlements on the other side of the river in Paspay territory were, along with English settlements to the east and west of the Cuyahannock. Regardless of this matter, the English launched attacks against the Cuyahannock, killing their people, burning their towns, and taking their crops so that those who survived the assault would have to fight to survive against starvation and malnourishment in the coming months. Although the Cuyahannock did not leave their home, they faced ongoing yearly attacks by the English, disease brought from Europe, and the continual seizure of their land by English colonists. By the 1630s, the Cuyahannock were completely displaced from their homes. Cuyahannock survivors moved in with members of the Nansemund and Wereskoyak to form a new group called the Pochiak or Pochayak, but by 1669 they were also forced apart. There is no dedicated space anymore for the Cuyahannock apart from this small historical marker alongside a road in Surrey County. With this video, we invite you to think about the stories and history on the ground right below your feet as you watch. Although we cannot see the people who lived, traveled, and worked right here, or the places they called home, picture what these spaces would have looked like, sounded like, and felt like if they still stood today.